All right, so you might have a kick, kick electric scooter like this one, that one. These are cheaper Chinese brands that I've just picked up online for second hand, having issues with them, really cheap. Um, this one needs a new motor controller, which I've ordered and that's on its way. But I thought I'd run you through a pretty simple repair um, where the battery is apparently died on on a scooter like this and it's not accepting charge so it won't turn on um uh, it won't you plug it in the light might flash but it's not gonna charge and so you you know may assume that the battery is dead and there's probably cases where the battery is dead right it's killed the cell or whatever but um chances are it's just dropped below its minimum threshold and the the controller won't let it charge the charger won't let it charge and it'll just stay and do nothing so we'll just quickly get to how you get to the battery um you don't actually need to pull the whole battery out like i've done here on this one but i will show you the charge system the, the charge operation on this battery just so it's easy and, 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 and you know what to do but yeah, we'll, we'll open this up and get started. Okay, so different scooters have different ways of getting to the battery. In this type, the, the battery is within the stalk. So we'll take these two off, these Allen key heads. We'll take these two off. And in this kind, you, you need to take these off that hold the light because it's held in with a um, contraption like that and then there's this thing on the back and when you screw those these through it actually pushes that out and that's what holds this whole thing in which keeps everything secure and keeps the battery in place so we'll take those out and open that up so with those screws out they're long ones you can pull that off, right? And then that's your whole handlebar setup, which will come off. And then you'll have, that can hang down. That's the bottom section of it, where the charger goes. And then you can move your way through here, some wires, um, and you're gonna be unscrewing these two so that you can essentially pull everything out and get to the battery okay so at this stage when you've got these four screws out um, and the lights just hanging there don't go yanking stuff out because they differ in different models but in this one if you actually look in here we well, can't really see it but there are behind these screws that hold the light in there are four smaller allen um sort of screws so you can see if you put your smaller allen key in it will indeed catch on to screws behind you just need to loosen them you don't need to like take them all the way out but loosen those there's four of them behind all the screws. You don't have to, as I said, you don't have to actually pull the Allens out. You just look, because they're, they're pushing that block, which is like this. They're pushing that block in to keep everything in. And so if you just try yanking it out, it's not going to come out until you loosen all those screws. So you can see now that I've loosened them, this thing is, right, it's loose. And so now you can begin pulling that out, making sure to feed the wires back through, pulling that out, and then you can get to the battery pack in here. So you can move it around and pull it out. So in this case, that's the motor controller in this one. It's a lot smaller than in some of the other ones. And the wires are kept behind and this is what we're interested in okay i've just unplugged it 
but this is what we're interested in the plug that goes to the battery so in this case it's here and this is the that's the male xt35 is it xt30 plug so that's the one that goes to the battery and that's the one that you know, well that is the battery and that one goes to the motor controller so you don't want to be going that one you want to be meddling with this one which is the battery so if you put your multimeter on there and measure that when the battery is flat it'll be low um, I think usually the cutoff for something is like 16 volts even if it was at 16 as high as 16 it'll still not register so this needs to operate it's a, it's operating voltage or opt, you know is about 19.4 volts this lithium-ion battery so if it's significantly below there the controller will just shut it off so even if it's as high as 16 um sometimes it's you know it's still gonna it's gonna cut it off so you're gonna want to charge this battery just jump charge it directly only for a short amount of time to get some current through it to build its its voltage up to where it's high enough that the normal charger will accept it and will start charging it. All right, so here is a battery that's been removed from the scooter. Um, and this is, so you don't have to take the battery out to do it. All you need is access to the XT30 plug or if you have a different appliance you know because you can do these for drills you can do this for laptop batteries everything um, you just need access to essentially the plug that's going to the main battery pack um, so here you've got the battery this is a, a 6s battery so um, it's a nominal voltage of 25.2 volts and um, so basically it'll it'll charge up to 29.4 volts so that's what we'll have our little um power supply at but um yeah just a quick rundown basically that's that's the battery pack and here are the cells inside so i think 18 650 lithium ion cells and there are right there's four of them in each segment seven segments but it is a 6s battery um this is the bms so battery management system this is the smarts of it this is what is this is what's causing the issue because the battery voltage is too low it's below the the, the cutoff threshold voltage which as a protective um sort of redundancy or not redundancy but it's as a protective measure um it doesn't allow it to accept charge because if the battery does drop down below a voltage for for a fact because it's faulty then it can cause damage to the cells if you charge it up so this bms will will stop it allowing it to charge and you can see that the charge port does go through into the bms it connects to the bms so you you don't have access directly from the charge port to the batteries themselves but going through here, we can see that these go directly into the battery. Um, so we can sort of jump charge the cells directly. Now you've got to be careful when doing this because if the cells are damaged, if there is a short, then you can get a large amount of current going into that battery, damaging the cell and damaging or adding to damaging the pack. So basically you just want to make sure that when you do this setup and you do jump charge that you're checking the temperature okay if, if one section of it gets hot or all of it gets too hot to handle too hot to even touch then you, there's a problem with the with the batteries and you can't continue so i mean it's fine if it gets warm and it starts to heat up a little bit but it, it shouldn't get hot really hot so what we're going to do is we're going to go to here you've got the positive and negative it's labeled and it's got a little mark on it as well positive and negative um we're gonna if you have an xt30 female uh, that's 
that's female. So male connector that just clips onto that and has the bare wires, that's obviously easier. But likely if not, you just want to get some some sort of thickish wire that's going to be able to fit snugly into these two terminals so that you've got a way of connecting your supply. So in my case, I know the nominal voltage, I know the charge voltage, I know it's going to be charging up to 29.4 volts. So I'll set my power supply to 29.4 volts. And then I'll be able to actually charge it. So, so I've hooked that up and with this power supply, you could control the current as well. So I've really screwed down the, the current limiting dial because if not, I could let 10 amps go through it and it could damage the battery. So with this, I've just limited um, to about two amps and I'm going to now connect this up. And as you can see, the voltage has dropped and it's it's putting you know 1.3 amps into it and it's slowly charging and then that, that voltage will increase. And so you, you want to do that for you know 30 seconds first just to see how it's all going, feel it out through, and then you know try it for a minute just until you can get that, that voltage creeping up. And then you can take this off and then you can just plug your normal um, power like charger into it and it should be able to it should accept charge then because you've increased the the, the voltage on the batteries because you've given them some charge on the cells and then the BMS will function as normal and that's how you're gonna jump charge your lithium ion batteries. So again, be careful when you're doing this, make sure nothing gets too hot. Um, but if, if you're looking after your battery and it has just, the, the, you've left it for a while and a charge just has gone a bit too low, then this trick will, um, will get you out of trouble. Now, obviously if you don't have a, power, a variable power supply like this, then you can use a battery. So as long as the nominal voltage of your sorry jumping battery is hot, is equal to 29.4 volts or a little bit higher, then you can use it. So a good example would be if you had another charged battery, um, you know, an easy case in that case would be these drill batteries because you could use a, a separate drill battery to jump that one and get the voltage where it needs to be. Um, but yeah, as long as you have a, a supply that, that can deliver slightly higher than your charging voltage, then it will boost the battery, it will give it a bit of charge, and then once it's reached that higher level, you'll be able to plug in your normal charger back when you put everything back in, um, and it'll charge normally. It'll, And you can, you can actually, once it's out like that, you can test it, by just because it's all, everything's connected, so you can just plug the charger back in and the green light should come on to show that you've so if it doesn't work the first time with with jumping do it a little bit more and then try putting in the charger but you know if it's if you're sitting there char jumping it for a while and it's not accepting charge and it's heating up then there's obviously something wrong but if not this is okay, so really will work close the top bit up and put everything in close the top bit up Give it a squeeze down until these holes line up and then screw the grub screws back in. Not too tight, just pan tight. And then that top bit will stay locked in and then you can continue.
Alright guys, that's it. That's good. It can then just be plugged back into the normal, each normal charger and it'll charge up. It'll start at one bar and it'll charge up fully. Um, and you can do this for any kind of lithium-ion battery, um, any sort of equipment, cameras, um, scooters, phones, I mean, so long as you can get the battery out. Um, a lot of them you can't these days, but any device with lithium-ion battery that's not accepting, laptops, you know, not accepting charge, you can go straight in, get to the battery, jump, charge it, um, as long as you're at above that nominal voltage, like at or above, a little bit above that nominal voltage of the battery, um, yeah, but don't, don't go trying it when you don't know the battery capacity or the battery voltages because you could just end up frying things and frying yourself. So yeah, be careful, but this is just a trick to just be able to, you know, you've got something that's dead, instead of chucking it out, you can try this, get the battery back up to life. You might find it doesn't doesn't work or doesn't help, it just dies again, in, in which case the, the battery will be dead and you will have to change the cells over, which we might, you know, get into at a later stage. But yeah, that should help you out um, to get back on your feet and keep moving. Cheers.